Hi everybody, it's Robbie from Southern California. And you saw me do this tote the other day, so you can go back and see exactly how I set up the totes. But I wanted to show you this one. And this one had different things growing in it too, including tomatoes. I just dug this out to the bottom. There was nothing left. There's a couple eggshells there. And I'm gonna tell you something else in a second. Look at these three. These just came out of here. It's wonderful, wonderful black soil. And the only thing you're going to see in here right now are some roots. Look at that. Now, there are some earthworms in there, but there's not a lot. You're going, wait a minute. It's always loaded with earthworms. I have not refreshed or done anything to this tote in two years. Two years ago, I set this up. I did it just the way I always do it, leaves and branches. And the only leaves and branches I picked up was this, and most of this was just sitting on the top. I'm going to put it back just in case there's some earthworms or something there. So this is what I collected. And what's going to happen is it's going to go into this tote here, the red chair. I've already done that one. See how it's empty now? I left a lot of the soil on the bottom. I'm going to push the leaves towards the holes. Well, what it will do is continue to give it good drainage because it won't get packed, but none of this turned into muck. This broke down in the best way ever. Just um, black gold. Look at that. It's the richest looking potting soil. That's what it looks like. You know, it's garden soil. It's the best compost. So I'm going to put that all in there, and then I'm just going to push everything over and then decide what I'm going to plant. And then I'll see how much I want to top. Either I can use some of that somewhere else, or I can just put it all back. But in the meantime, all the earthworms are going to come back. And I'll have a ton of earthworms. I've got a, quite a few in there, but it's not packed. And now I'll be composting in place as I'm growing in there. So I've dumped everything, even bits and pieces of celery that I took out of my garden. And I'm going to put a little bit back there because I want the earthworms and everything to move around. I'm going to go ahead and put a bunch of leaves back there too because I want to make sure that there's food everywhere on the bottom. This will all break down. I can come back next year and I'll have even more soil. You could do this even when you're not planting in it. As long as the microbes get in there and they will, they'll find all this and the earthworms will find it too. Then you are going to have your own soil and this is going to be beautiful. Oh gosh, this is gorgeous. I can't believe how beautiful this looks, oh, you can see the bits and pieces of stuff that were in there before. Isn't that amazing? And this all broke down. And this is what it was full of. Toilet paper rolls, kitchen scraps, eggshells, leaves, branches, old pieces of plants. And it all broke down into this beautiful black gold. So cool. There they are. They're hiding all through here. And that's why I've got to make sure these don't dry out. If you remove soil out of, you know, live, a live tote that's full of earthworms, do not let your black gold dry out. Even if you don't know where to put it at first, make sure that you water it as if there's a plant in it. Otherwise, you will lose the earthworms that are in there, including whatever eggs and stuff are in there. You don't want to lose that. So make sure you keep them damp. So the reason I wanted to show you this one is by leaving it for two years and letting the plants grow, and it's beautiful. There's not a lot of leaf matter, cardboard, even eggshells left in here for the earthworms. So a lot of the earthworms have left. They crawl out, night crawlers. They crawl out at night and they'll go somewhere else. There was nothing in there for them to eat. So what I'm gonna do with this one, no different than I do everything else is where the holes are especially. This keeps it draining really, really good. So I'm gonna load this all up on the bottom with leaves. I'm gonna go into my garden and grab a whole bunch of collard leaves, even from around here, lettuce leaves. I'll groom a little bit of this. And then I'm going to load the bottom up and I'm going to put all that back. I might mix in a little bit of leaves. If I've got some kitchen scraps around here, I might dump it in there. Now, if I'm going to grow carrots or radishes in there, you don't want to overload, let's say, a lot of kitchen scraps because what you'll do is you'll build the soil up so rich that you'll end up with a bushy carrot top and a smaller carrot sometimes, smaller turnip, a lot of your root crops 
what they're doing is they're storing in the tuber, in the root of the plant, which is the bottom of the carrot, the bottom of the radish, you know, because they're grabbing food for the plant. But if you've got tons of food in your tote, then sometimes you end up with a fancy, beautiful top, but not that big bottom. So if I decide to go with carrots, leaves are fine. They're all going to go on the bottom. It's not going to do anything. It will still be wonderful rich soil for carrots and radishes, turnips, anything like that, beets. But it'll be on the bottom, and that will encourage the earthworms to come back and to multiply what's in there and continue to do their thing. If I put it closer to the top with a lot of kitchen scraps and stuff, then I it could be too rich. But if I'm going to put a squash in there or tomatoes or, or anything else besides a root crop, then you want to load it up with whatever you want. And then I'm going to top it with this. I don't even need any potting soil. Why would I? Look how beautiful this is. Look at this. Absolutely gorgeous. Don't worry about the roots. The little bit of the leftover roots will break down. But I am going to go load this up. And then this will be just fabulous to grow in. I just have to decide fairly quick. Do I want to plant carrots? Or do I want to go ahead and do a beautiful top crop of something such as broccoli, zucchini? And I could always do carrots right now if I want to. And then come back later, put in a bunch of kitchen scraps. Which is basically the same thing from my garden. You know, all the leaves and stuff. And then rebuild the soil. And then immediately, I don't wait immediately I start planting my plants. Mother Nature doesn't wait. Mother Nature drops her leaves to the ground. Seeds get covered by the leaves. And then the baby seedlings start to grow with the leaves breaking down and everything. That's the richest part of the soil when all the microbes are eating up the leaves and the branches that are falling from trees. And then it gets wet from the rain or from you watering. And then all these seeds grow. Believe you me, I have pepper trees that come up everywhere. And that is the time they grow. They don't wait. The only thing they'll wait for, basically, is warm weather. The weather. If the weather's right, they will grow. Let me tell you something. You can't stop the leftover tomatoes or squash that got left. When it's the right time, it will grow. So I'm going to set this up. And we'll come back later and see what I decide to do. But I just wanted to share with you that beautiful, rich, black gold. And all that's left are two little, little pieces of eggshell. And that is it. Two years, no work, just planting. But it's about time to change up. I could have left it. If I just wanted to do a root crop, I could have left it just the way it is. But I wanted to get it out anyways. Because now, if I don't put all that back, I can plant something else in that beautiful rich soil that I made from my own trees. Didn't have to buy it. Didn't cost me a penny. But again, there's absolutely nothing wrong with doing this. And then even if you want to start all your totes that way, load them up, your containers, your buckets, whatever you want to plant in. And then you can just put a little bit of potting soil. Just buy a small amount. Buy what you can afford and put that on the top. So you have a layer of potting soil to get started in case you don't have any soil on the bottom. But I mean, you can plant in this, but it won't be, you know, truthfully, it won't be enough. You need something, some sort of soil. So just put a little bit of soil on the top and you could spread a big bag of soil probably, oh, I've done it, to like six, seven, eight totes. <laughs> and you can spread it far because you're only putting it on the top. And as the plants grow and they will grow, and even if the bottom is packed with leaves and matter, all that's going to break down because some of the potting soil will go down. It will go into the soil. The microbes will get down there. Everything will get down there and start breaking it down. And before you know, you know it, your container is just packed with Mother Nature's soil. So for now, what I'm going to do is I filled this up with different leaves and even some old roots and stuff in there from plants. Whatever I can find. I'm going to put some more of the soil in here. I might put some walking onions in the center. Now I like layering. This is set in there. I think I'm going to put a pepper here. Boy, oh, something big there. Oh, rocks. Rocks are good. They leach out some minerals for you. I think I'm going to put some walking onions in here. So a lot of times I come through here and I water. It will water the walking onions, 
but the water will leach out and slowly go through here. So if I don't water the whole tote, the plants that are in there are still gonna get water from the flower pot that's in there. Now, I'm gonna get something planted pretty soon. Now, this is just gorgeous. I'm just gonna put a little bit more of the soil there. And you know what? I didn't use it all, because I don't fill my totes to the top. This is more than enough. Look at this. I still have a container of that rich, beautiful soil I made. And I just have to make sure I keep it damp and then decide where I'm gonna put it next. But that is just gorgeous. I definitely wanna keep this water. So everything that's alive in there will stay alive since it was alive when I took it out. So I hope you enjoyed this daily video on my chair garden. I'm working on it little by little and I know a lot of you have asked to see the updates. So that's the update on it today. And I know a little bit of the clips are the future and a little bit of the clips are the past. We're only talking 15 minutes, but I kind of did it in clips and I thought it'll be fun that you'll see before and after. And now all I have to do is decide what am I gonna really truly plant in there? Of course that tomato plant could take off and just burst into tons of tomatoes. It could stay there, but if not, I can't wait to plant zucchini. With that, have a wonderful day, and don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye.